Welcome to Rethink, the podcast that empowers you to challenge your existing beliefs and embrace new, more productive ways of thinking. Here at Rethink, we believe that the key to self-fulfillment lies in shattering old thought patterns and adopting new mindsets that support personal growth and empowerment. With expert guests and thought leaders from a wide range of fields, we explore strategies and insights that can help you achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. From relationships to career, business ownership, and health, you are the source of your own success. We're just here to help you tap into your true potential and create a brighter future. So join us on the journey of personal growth and empowerment, and let's rethink what's possible for our lives. In the heart of a bustling city where dreams echo through skyscrapers, there lived Alex, a high-performing individual with aspirations as vast as that skyline. Well, Alex had envisioned a life marked by personal triumphs and, of course, professional achievements. However, the path from vision to victory seemed shrouded in complexity. Well, one day, as the city humped with this usual energy, Alex stumbled upon a podcast. The podcast was a guiding beacon for high achievers seeking a roadmap for their ambitions. Well, in this serendipitous moment, Alex discovered an episode that unfolded a strategic approach to goal achievement. The journey began with setting SMART goals. Alex, armed with newfound clarity, he spent the first day of the transformational week reflecting on aspirations that resonated with the core of their being. The city lights seemed to be twinkling with approval as Alex pinned down specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals. As the week unfolded, Alex meticulously crafted a step-by-step plan, breaking down lofty goals into manageable weekly targets. With each day, the city witnessed Alex prioritizing tasks, time-blocking activities, and yes, cultivating adaptability to navigate the dynamics of urban landscapes. The cityscape transformed into a canvas of collaboration. Accountability partnerships were forged with regular check-ins becoming a cornerstone of progress. Successes were celebrated and challenges became opportunities for growth. Gratitude permeated the air as Alex expressed appreciation for the invaluable support that he receives. In the final days of the transformative week, a reciprocal spirit emerged. Alex, now an ambassador of encouragement, extended support to others in the network. The city, once a maze of aspirations, now stood witness to a community of high performers, each contributing to the collective journey. As the week concluded, Alex stood at the threshold of a new chapter. The once daunting skyline now seemed like a conquerable horizon. The podcast had not only provided a guide, but it had woven a narrative of transformation, turning a vision into a victorious reality. The city, with its endless possibilities, echoed with the stories of high achievers like Alex, rewriting the narrative of what's achievable when goals are set with precision, plans are executed strategically, and a supportive community fuels the journey from vision to victory. Hey guys, welcome in to that particular podcast. Yes, Rethink. You've reached Rethink Podcast. My name is Kelly. It's my host. It's it's, it's my host. It's my pleasure to be your host uh, today and every day that you tune in. Uh, I've got a really great uh, podcast planned for you today. Really excited about concluding this particular series. Uh, Those of you who've been around know that we are in the final phase of a series. The series is entitled 30 Days, or actually the uh, series is entitled Reconstructing Your Mental Self-Concept. Within this series, we are offering you, we are giving you free of charge, a 30-day Reconstructing Your Mental Concept ebook. And all you got to do is go to the show notes and put in your email address and bam, you've got... uh, a document that helps you reconstruct yourself, uh, your mental self concept in 30 days. And today is the final installment of that particular series. 
So that's why I'm excited because I love to do these series. I feel like this really helps our listeners to be able to um, document, to be able to um, track and see your progress as it relates to your achievements, your goals, whether they're professional, personal, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we are helping you to execute, just like we said here uh, in the last part of our, our story. We're talking about goals uh, that are being set with precision. That's important. Plans that are executed strategically, not all willy nilly. You can track and see your progress. That's very important because it builds confidence. And then a supportive community that fuels the journey uh, from vision to victory. So, um, yeah, welcome into the podcast, particularly if it's your first time. If you are new to the podcast, go ahead now. Don't forget, subscribe to the podcast. You don't want to forget who we are and where we are. Rethink Podcast. Uh, we're in our third season, and this is show 32, 32, 33. I can't recall. I've got to look at my list. The point is, you've got 30 other shows to listen to in season three, and you've got two other seasons to binge. And what better time to do it? We're coming up on the holidays. I don't know when you're listening to this, but currently, this is the first weekend in December. And uh, so you got plenty of time to holidays coming up to be able to sit and binge. A lot of you guys are traveling, so travel safe. As you're traveling, the airport, the car, it doesn't matter. Turn on Rethink Podcast and listen to those other seasons. Uh, old timers, you guys know the deal. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this tribe, being a part of this community. It means a lot to me that we've grown to the point that we are, and we've done it innately without a whole bunch of marketing and different things like that. And we'll get into that. But uh, the point is, you guys have shared this content with your friends, your family members, your loved ones, your associates, which is what I've asked you to do. You've done that and we continue to grow. So thank you for doing that. Please continue. If you're not done that, pick out your favorite podcast. This may be it. Listen to the end. This may be it. And you can forward this to a family member, a friend, a loved one. Doesn't really matter. Say, Hey, I found this podcast. Guy seems to know what he's talking about. Very intriguing. Thought you should take a listen. Last thing I'll ask you to do is to uh, go to your podcast platform, wherever you're listening. And a lot of you guys listen to us on Spotify. A lot of you guys listen to us on iHeartRadio. And yes, a lot of you guys listen to us on Apple Podcasts. But the truth of the matter is we're on Pandora. We're on Google. We are, you know, Buzzsprout. Anywhere you can listen to a podcast, you can pull us up. Just uh, find us, rethink, uh, and make sure you put my name in, which is Kelly. And it should come up. And I want you to give us, please, a review and a star rating. We prefer the five star, but we want you to be honest. If you really do like the podcast, that really helps us out. If you could go and give us a five star review, uh, we really would appreciate it. Um, yeah, and, and make sure you do go in the notes. The, the 30 day to you know reconstructing yourself, your mental self concept is free. Uh, after this series is done, it's probably going to just go on our website and it's going to be sold. But for you, our listeners, it's free. It's free. And we've offered things like this in the past. I just want to make sure you guys are taking advantage of the things that we're trying to put in your hand to help you. And the reason I'm talking about this in, in more detail today is because once we're done with the series, uh, you know, I, uh, here's the way I learn. I have to bookmark and save things. I have notes that I have to refer back to. I don't try to force myself to remember everything because that's going to give you, a, 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 you know, that's going to affect you in terms of uh, your, your mentality, uh, being able to recall, you know, particularly the older you get, the more things that you got going on. It's very important for you to develop a system where you can access information. Don't put it all on you. Have a system in place where you know, hey, here here are my notes from this particular meeting or here are my notes from this particular day. And I can go back and I can refer to things and I can recall it that way. The reason I'm saying that is because uh, creating this ebook and if you download it, you put it on your laptop, let's say, you can go and refer to it anytime. That's what it's meant for. And we want you to be bookmarking these podcasts that you're finding particular value in because you may want to go back and listen to them a second time or a third time because you don't hear everything the first time. I find I listen to our podcast here uh, from a quality standpoint because I want to make sure it's good to go out. But I also listen to it sometimes when I'm in the car because I'm learning just as much as you guys are from from doing these podcasts because it's always something that comes up that um, kind of pricks my um, inner being and says, hey, yeah, this is this is something great to implement. 
So anyway, let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. The value for today, you're going to love this. We're going to end up with uh, some seven-day blueprints of our key points today. So you're going to get some tangible, hands-on. These are some things I can do to help me strategically set goals, do step-by-step planning, and cultivate accountability. Because those are the things that describe this podcast today. So the podcast episode is entitled uh, Goal Achievement Through Reinforced Self-Concept. Again, kick a dead horse. Self-concept is the series. We're reconstructing our self-concept. This is the last phase. This is why we're talking about goal setting and achievement. All the other four were leading up to this stage. You get those other four in place. This stage is going to be a breeze. We're going to start writing our goals now. We're going to start seeing some things change in our lives. So um, the power of goal achievement through a fortified self-concept. So this discussion, we're going to guide you through setting and attaining, uh, you know, the goals that resonate with your self-image. You know, you built your self-image. You've reconstructed it. And I'm not going to go into great detail about what that means. You just got to go back and listen to the to the other podcast. Um, but we tell you about how to begin to uh, develop that image that really resonates with who you are now, not who your parents are, or what your society assumes you should be. It's important that you connect with it because your passion is what's going to keep you going. Your passion uh, plus your work equals fulfillment. If you're new to the podcast, we say that here all the time. Yes, we'll get the money and the resources and things like that. But what we really want is fulfillment. You know, a lot of people, I'm sure or you've seen a lot of people or heard of a lot of people that do have the resources, the money and the houses and da, 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 but their lives seem to be in shambles. They don't really have fulfillment. So it's important that while we're on this track toward complete freedom, that fulfillment is on the menu. It's got to be because that's the whole deal. We want to be fulfilled with the things that we do. All right. So all this is fostering a path to high performance because you guys are high performing individuals. This is why you listen to this podcast. So let's go. Here are some highlights. We're going to talk about strategic goal setting. We're going to learn the art of SMART goals. SMART goals mean specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Again, SMART goals. Specific is for the S, M is for measurable, A is for achievable, R is for relevant. Let's go back right there to achievable. You don't you don't want to set a goal that I listen, I, far be it for me to say any goal that you set is impossible. My point is you want to set a goal that you can achieve because on your way to hitting the higher and higher goals, you want to build some momentum. So if you start off with the toughest one and you don't achieve it, or at least don't achieve it within the time that you want to get it done, it can kind of set you back, particularly with your confidence. So it's important to set SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So let's discover uh, and how, how, how to align these with your principles and your self-concept. It's important that based on the work that you've done up to this point, that you are setting goals based on your self-image based on your self-concept, and you want to help you to see the clear roadmap for success. It's really important, guys, uh, to write stuff down, to write your goals down. It's important for you to see it. So your budget, I'm working on a project, and it's, it's not new, but it's sort of new. I'm taking a new approach to it. And the first thing I started doing is writing down the budget, writing what it will look like when it succeeds. And that helps me to generate more ideas about it, but it also gives me some really good feelings about, you know, what can happen when this actually succeeds. So this is part of the roadmap, the budget. Number two is step-by-step planning. The importance of developing a step-by-step plan to achieve your goals. Uncover the practical techniques that high-performing individuals use to break down ambitious objectives into manageable achievable steps. You're a high performing individual. The more you achieve, the more you're going to achieve. And what happens, because this happened to me, is that your goals get bigger and broader. The challenges get a little more tougher each time you achieve something. Your your next challenge becomes a little bigger, a little broader. Why? Because you're growing and you want to flex your muscles. You don't go in the gym and lift the same weights every day for a year. I hope you don't do that because you're not going to get stronger. Once your muscles max out, 
on 100, you need to be going to 125, from 125 to 150, 175, etc. So this is a way that we uh, grow spiritually and mentally as well. Uh, to 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 the next uh, challenge is tougher, but we can use the same approach to to uh, overcome it, uh, to surpass it, and that is uh, breaking down these objectives, the the ambition, whatever it is you're trying to do, into manageable and achievable steps. You've heard me say here before: How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You sit down and try to eat that elephant in one sitting, you're gonna have a problem. Gonna have a problem. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is cultivating accountability, which is very important. And I want to sneak in here a little something. I think it's time for us to have a mechanism by which we can communicate with each other, not just with me. So I've had a Facebook page, which some of you guys know about, but I'm gonna start putting it in the show notes so that we can communicate more as it relates to what we think about our episodes. And also we can begin to ask questions to each other. It's going to be our community uh, kind of springboard. It's going to be where we go to, to talk about new launches of anything, to ask questions, to have comments about shows. Okay. It's important that we have a support system. Okay. It's important that we have a support system so that we can all stay accountable for our aspirations. So let's say, for example, you are a writer. You're a seasoned writer. You're a veteran. You have done very well as a writer. You may have someone come into the group, into the community that's looking for advice on how to even just start off. So imagine the insight and support that you can provide to a newbie when you had success as a veteran and just encouraging them, you know, and also applying some applicable steps that they can take in order to be successful. That's what this platform will be used for. So today we're going to understand how sharing our goals with the network that we're creating there on on Facebook can help um, uh, us stay committed, but also it can propel us into our industry further, into our careers further, into our marriages further. Okay. All right. So let's get going. We're going to get straight into it. We're going to talk daily practices. We're going to start off with smart goals. All right. So. Again, SMART goals being specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. The purpose of setting SMART goals, this practice, will provide you with clarity and focus. There's nothing, because I've done it both ways. I've done it where I've tried to remember things day after day, week after week. And then I also started writing my goals down. I started being more organized and more intentional. And I'm telling you, the second way is much more productive. And it's much easier on your mind. You don't want to be in a position where either you can't recall something or you put so much pressure on yourself that you are not operating at your highest level or highest ability to perform. In other words, creating stress. Don't create stress for yourself. Write things down. Know exactly what it is that you intend to do and know exactly what it is or how it is you intend to do it. That's what we're doing. So align, uh, you know, your focus, your daily goals with the uh, overarching objective. So what we're going to do first is do a seven day blueprint for setting smart goals. All right. Day one. Day one. Self-reflection and clarity. This is how you should begin. Don't just start jotting stuff down. First, the mental, then the physical. First, think about what it is. That you want to do. So we're going to begin with introspection. Begin with introspection. Go inwardly, identify what it is that you truly want to achieve and why. The why is so important. The why is going to keep you motivated. Let me give you an example. I uh, decided to be an entrepreneur and to be a um, uh, uh, just a, a, a successful business owner. Because one, it gave me freedom. But more importantly is I want to be able to give this type of freedom to my family. That's my why. For me to to know that, you know, as successful as I can be here while I'm still, you know, here, it's going to be great that day comes when I'm able to provide this type of success and this type of freedom uh, to my to my children, to my family. 
So you you need to establish as well your why. And that's important. We're going to document this. So, okay. Identify what you truly want to achieve. Reflect on your values, your passions, and your overarching life vision. Everything needs to tie into that overarching vision. Where are you going ultimately? Not just in three, five, 10 years, but ultimately, what is it that you're creating here? Define your goals with clarity, ensuring that they align with your authentic self. Your authentic self. Again, go back and listen to the whole series. Talk about who you really are and what you really believe. Do not, um, well, I can't tell you what to do, but I suggest that you set up your goals. This this, uh, introspection should be done. This reflection and clarity point should be more about you than what your society wants or what your family wants. It's got to be about you. Okay, because that's the whole point of reconstructing the self concept. If you're doing it based on what somebody else wants you to do, you may lose vision, you may lose passion for it, that you don't have the value, and it's it's their vision and not yours. All right, so let's go to day two. Uh specificity. Let's get this in vision. Refine your goals by making them specific. All right, so you wrote down your goals, they're aligned with your passions, your values, your self concept your authentic self. Now we're going to refine them, not redefine them, but refine them, make them more narrow. Instead of a broad aim, okay, articulate the precise objectives. For example, instead of you saying, hey, I I just need to exercise more, be specific. Right now, I'm going to run five miles three times a week. That's a specific thing that you will do. That's a tangible thing. So specify, a uh, specificity brings focus and a clear sense of direction. Don't say I'm just going to, I'm going to lose weight in 2024. I'm going to lose 50 pounds and this is how I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to increase my revenue by six figures. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not just going to make more money. I'm going to specifically increase my revenue in, in this area of my business. Be specific. That's important because day three. We're going to set measurable milestones, break down your goals into measurable milestones, establish criteria for tracking progress. If your goal involves learning, quantify it, such as instead of read one book, per, I'm sorry, quantify it, such as read one book per month. Let's say your goal is to, you know, be more educated, to, to you know, build your vocabulary, whatever it is. Your measurable milestone could be that one month. Each month for, for, you know, for the 12 months, I'm going to read one book. You can measure that because in 30, 31 days, you'll know if you complete the book or not. Measurable goals help to provide us with tangible indicators of our advancement, of our achievement. And you can mark it off your list. It's great to mark things off your list. It builds momentum and confidence. Day four, ensuring achievability. Now, we talked about this a little early. Evaluate what you are trying to do. Evaluate each goal for its ability or its level of achievability. Access whether the goal is realistic and attainable, given your current circumstance. So let's say, for example, you weigh 500 pounds and your goal is to lose half of that. Okay. Realistically, how long would it take for you to do that? You don't want to set a goal. It's okay uh, from January to to July. By the time you know I'm getting ready to go to the beach, I want to have lost that weight. That may not be a realistic goal. Does can a person lose 250 pounds in six months without surgery? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's an offer we thought you'd be interested in. Are you looking to develop and create stunning coursework? Uh, launch your stunning Academy website in a snap. You can choose from among 50 plus designer made, ready to go, industry specific site templates to launch your website fast and with confidence. It's very simple, very powerful. They're flexible courses. You can wave goodbye to dull educational content. There are countless ways to package and distribute your learning content. Create listed or private courses that can be paid or free courses, or you can drip. Feed your content to build and to nurture your audience the way that you want. 
You can create compelling and interactive courses, leverage the most rich library of learning activities, and undoubtedly the most customizable course player in the market to build flexible learning experiences to keep your listeners engaged. And lastly, be the boss of your content and design your final course product exactly as you envision it. Preview it as you build it in real time. Get it up and running fast than you ever have imagined. Why don't you go down to the show notes, guys, today and uh, click on Learns World. If you're interested in building courses that matter, you can monetize, create memberships, create courses, and create passive income for yourself. So support our sponsor, Learns World. So do your research, set realistic goals. These goals, again, should resonate with your values and your aspirations that is more likely to help keep you motivated. Uh, Day six, time-bound commitments. Assign a time frame to each goal. This adds urgency and it helps you to prioritize your tasks. For example, rather than saying start a blog, I'm going to start a blog, say publish the first blog, the first blog post within the next two weeks. So your time-bound goals instill a sense of discipline and a sense of urgency. Okay, be specific. And day seven, review and refinement. I'm going to start back over again because it's almost Monday. Wrap up the week by reviewing what you've done. Review your set goals. Ensure that they meet the SMART criteria and make the adjustments as needed as you move forward. This constant, this consistent review establishes a habit of aligning daily, ensuring that you're on your path uh, with your overarching uh, aspirations. So that seven days. To, uh, you know, in terms of smart goals, that's a seven day blueprint. We went through all seven days. And I, as I'm going through this, I'm thinking maybe it'll be nice to put this on a PDF for you guys as well. So congratulations. I'm going to do that. I'm going to um, put the link down into the uh, show notes as soon as it's done. Uh, so uh, this will be easier for you to keep up with. All right. So the second practice is uh, setting step by step planning. Uh, seven day breakdown for step by step planning. Here we go. Day one, identify long term goals. List your long term goals for the week. These are the overarching objectives that you aim to accomplish. You want to be specific and ensure alignment with your self concept. Okay, some of these terms are going to overlap for obvious reasons. Day two, break down into weekly targets. What does that sound like? Yes, setting your goals. Divide your long-term goals into smaller, more achievable, we said achievable early, smaller weekly targets. This step transforms larger aspirations into more manageable and actionable tasks. Each task should contribute to your overall goal. Day three, daily task enumeration. This is new. Break down your weekly targets into daily tasks. So you got a week's worth of stuff that you want to do. What are you going to do every day? Assign specific tasks for each day of the week, ensuring that they collectively contribute to the weekly target. Okay. If you're trying to complete that blog post at the end of the week and you research, you start off with research and you end up with writing, you need to make sure that each day you've assigned a particular task that by Saturday or Sunday, depending on when you're going to post, that you have that blog written. You have everything you need in order to write that blog. Day four, uh, now that you got those tasks down, it's time to prioritize the tasks. Prioritize your daily tasks. Identify which tasks are critical and must be accomplished first. Do things in order. Make sure you're getting what you need first. This helps you to focus. It helps you to focus on the most important activities and it ensures your progress. Day five, time blocking. Allocate specific time blocks for each task. Don't spend all day working on one thing because you're going to um, lose time, number one, but you're not going to be able to complete all your tasks. Create a schedule. This can help you to accommodate your daily responsibilities while providing dedicated time for goal-related activities. This we all can improve on. I'll tell you why. Things happen throughout the day. Uh, Phone calls, emails, uh, and different alerts take our attention from what we're doing away from what we're trying to accomplish. And it's our responsibility as the high-performing individuals that we are to to take our attention back, to take the attention back to what it is that we said we wanted to do. 
So time blocking. Uh, day six, adaptability and flexibility. Recognize the need for adaptability. Life is dynamic, kind of prelude to that already. And it's unexpected. You know, sometimes unexpected events can occur. Build flexibility into your plan to accommodate for changes and compromising uh, without compromising your goals. So let's say you plan on doing it. You're getting four things done on Monday and, and, and three things on Tuesday. But Monday, somehow you only got two things done. Well, guess what? They got to roll over to Tuesday. You got to get more done on Tuesday because you want to stay, you know, on schedule. And Friday comes, you want to make sure that blog post is ready to go. And Saturday, you're going to hit send. We got to, you, you got to catch up sometimes. You got to be flexible. You got to be willing to adapt. All right, day seven, reflection and adjustment. You want to conclude the week, just like we said before, reflecting on the progress of your plan. How good uh, were you that week? How much did you get accomplished? Uh, access what was, uh, assess what was worked well and what can be improved. Sometimes, you know, you set out to do something. It doesn't really work that well. You got to make some revisions and you got to do a little differently the next week. So that is a seven-day breakdown for step-by-step planning. And step-by-step planning helps to develop daily habits, okay? Daily habits. Think about breaking your goals down to smaller tasks into daily habits. This only makes your objectives more manageable. And it's, and it's easy, to, you, people can easily get overwhelmed because we're just trying to do everything. But break it down, write it down into more manageable bites. All right, guys, lastly, is cultivating a support system. And as I said, we're going to be using our Facebook group here. Previously, it was called Things You Should Know. Um, I'll put in the show notes if I decide to change the name of it. I want to kind of keep it. I think if I change the name, I'm not sure. But I think if I change the name, I have to start from zero. And I don't want to do that. So I'll figure it out. But anyway, just know in the show notes, there will be a community link to our Facebook group. And that's where we're going to initiate this support system. But anyway, here's our seven day engagement. Number one, identify your support network. Now we're going to do this, the Facebook page, but you personally, you personally need to develop a support network within your uh, friend group, within your family or fraternity, mentors, colleagues, it doesn't matter. Get a list of individuals who can um, make up your support system. Uh, again, this may include your friends, your family, your mentors, your colleagues. Consider people who align with your goals. Consider people who you have similar interests. Consider people who have done what it is that you're trying to do. Day two, communicate your aspirations. You made your list. Now you're going to reach out to those folks. Initiate conversations with your support network about what it is that you're trying to do about your aspirations. Clearly communicate your goals. You should have your goals written down. Please don't call someone and not be clear about why you're calling them. It's going to confuse them and they're not going to want to participate. Make sure your goals are written down and they're clear. Clearly communicate your goals and why the goals matter to you and how this particular person can support you uh, in this effort. So let's say if it's weight loss again, if you're going to, if I was going to communicate to my mentor or to a colleague about a weight loss journey that I'm on and I want their support, I will make sure that I have a clear statement. It doesn't have to be very long. I have a clear statement. Listen, Bob, my goal in 2024 is to lose a uh, hundred pounds. Okay. And I'd like to have your support. I realize having worked with you for a while that you've been on a weight loss journey yourself. And I would like to have someone who has the experience that you have in my support system, because I know it's probably not going to be the easiest thing to do. Have that sort of conversation, but be clear on what it is you're trying to do so the person can know exactly what the expectations are. All right, day three, establish accountability partnerships. Identify potential accountability partners, which is kind of what I was just talking about within your support network. These are individuals who can hold you responsible. So if Bob sees me at lunch eating honey buns, he says, hey, dude, I thought you said you want to lose 100 pounds. So instead of going to lunch with this group, why don't we go to lunch together moving forward? Because I don't eat honey buns anymore. And honey buns are not going to get you to lose 100 pounds. They may get you to gain 100 more, but they're not going to get you to lose. So you need somebody that's going to help you stay accountable. 
and re- it helps you be responsible for the commitments that you're making. And also they can provide encouragement. They're not just there to catch you eating honey buns, but you know, maybe they see you're having a tough day or whatever the case may be. They can be there to provide encouragement when you do hit those challenging times. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's a podcast we thought you'd like. Hi, it's Tahimia. It's Cam. Rachel. And Amani. Your hostesses at The Art of Making It Work, the podcast that knows life doesn't need any help being hard, but sometimes we need a little help making it easier. On our show, we discuss an array of topics ranging from travel to friendships and even finances with a whole lot of girl chat in between. We're here to give you research-based life hacks and initiate discussions to help you and one another navigate this thing called life. So tune in to The Art of Making It Work every Monday for new episodes wherever you stream your podcast content. Day four, just regular check-in, regular check-ins. Schedule regular check-ins with your accountability partner. Nothing particular has happened, but just reach out. This could be brief, you know, brief meeting, phone call, something like that, even a test message. Share your progress. Discuss, you know, how you're feeling, discuss any challenges if you have. And most importantly, most importantly, celebrate any achievements that you do have and do that together. Celebrate the achievement. Day five, share successes and challenges. Uh, Foster openness by sharing both successes and challenges. Discuss the challenges uh, that allow your support system to provide guidance and encouragement to you. Don't hold it in. In other words, if you're having challenges, you have the support system there for a reason. If you're not going to communicate to them, there's no way they can help you. They can't guide you. They can't read your mind. So they can't guide you in a way that's going to be beneficial if you don't really tell them. Okay. It's mostly applies to my guys. Men, we have this thing of, you can say pride, but I think we're wired a certain way when it comes to asking for help or assistance or just wanting to appear strong. Uh, It's okay sometimes not to be the strongest guy in the room. You know, Um, if I go too far down this rabbit hole, we're going to be on a whole different podcast. But just know that we need help as well. And the only way you're going to get it is to ask for it, is to ask for it. And and like I said, no one can read your mind. Uh, The women that are in my life, the women that I know are very good communicators, so they don't have a problem communicating what's going on in terms of what they need. We do sometimes. We we hold on to things, and instead of uh, allowing someone to help us, we, we, we really wrestle with something longer than we need to because we are either trying to be strong, you know, in the face of other folks, or we have a prideful uh, ego uh, going on that says, hey, I should be able to do this myself. Okay. And I'm speaking from experience. Number six, day six, you want to express gratitude. Express gratitude to your support network first. Gratitude to yourself. Acknowledge how well you're doing and the fact that you've been doing this for five weeks or five months. It doesn't matter. Acknowledge the impact that your group is having on your journey. And your gratitude reinforces positive relationships. You know what? I have a fraternity brother. This is sort of on topic. I have a fraternity brother who needed help moving uh, from, you know, one apartment, one condo to the other. And listen. Had it been anybody else, maybe I would have just put money in the hat in terms of trying to help them get a a, 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 a truck or a, a company. I, w- I wouldn't mind paying for it. But I really don't like helping people move. But I knew him and I knew he needed help. So I helped him and, uh, you know, spent most of the day helping him move. You know what really went a long way with me? Um, the gratitude he showed when this was done. He was very, very grateful and very sincere. Um, he, he offered me multiple times to come to his home with his mom and, and have, you know, a holiday luncheon and, and dinners and stuff. He was just so, one, grateful to be in his new place, but he was grateful that me, along with a few other guys, helped him to accomplish this. Now, your goal may not be to move to a different condo, apartment, or house. 
your goal may be to establish yourself as a business owner in 2024. Your support team is there to help get you through this, your support group. And once you're successful, because you will be, make sure you go back to these folks and say, hey, I really appreciate you didn't have to do this. Thank you for taking the time to, to show me how to file for my EIN or LLC. Thank you for explaining to me the difference between an LLC and a sole proprietor. Thank you for, you know, guiding me uh, to, a, to a realtor who could help me find a storefront. I really appreciate it. I mean, you're a busy person. You took time out of your day to have a meeting with me uh, to help me, you know, to, to get in business. I really appreciate it. And I'm telling you, it really helps to, to foster a great relationship, one. But those people, they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They don't want you to pay them anything. But it does feel good when someone says, thank you. And the other thing is, if you want their help in the future, please say thank you. Please show gratitude. All right, last thing, reciprocal support. Here's where you come in. Offer support to others in your network. What can you help them with? Yes, you're not in business yet, and that's what you need from them, but they may need something from you. What does a reciprocal relationship look like? What do they find out what they need? Maybe they actually do need you to help them move or something. I don't know. A reciprocal relationship builds a strong, mutual, beneficial support system. You don't want to be in any relationship, men. You don't want to be in any relationship, women where you're always the one giving. It should be beneficial to both. It's a, what have you heard me say here? It's got to be a win-win. Figure out a way to help your partner win. Figure out a way, in this case, in your network, figure out a way to help other people win. When other people win, you win. Your encouragement, you never know how far it could go to help someone else. They may have something that you are trying to obtain. But guess what? You also may have something that they're trying to obtain. I I know from talking to young people, particularly today, that, um, you know, with social media and all this stuff, it makes, I'm sorry, I'm kind of nasally today, but social media will have you to think that, man, these folks are killing it. And what happens as a result of that Young people, people who are less naive or or more naive, I should say, have a tendency to believe that they're behind some sort of way. That why don't I have a jet and and all these cars and this big home and a wife and kids? And why am I not on vacation every week? The reason is because no one really is. But, you know, you see this all the time. You begin to think maybe I'm behind. I'm not doing as well as other people are. And what you've got to realize is. one, be kind to yourself, but two, um, these systems of support are there to kind of help guide you and help to protect you and help keep you grounded and encouraged at the same time. Grounded and encouraged at the same time. So I hope you've enjoyed the podcast today. This was short and sweet. Again, I'm going to work on your PDF today. Uh, maybe I'll make it an ebook, but I know I can put this into a PDF relatively quickly so you'll have it. I think you just need it as a PDF so you'll have it as notes so you can print them out, stick them in your journal. You know your journal, the one that we made a long time ago? Yep, that journal. Put these notes in there so that you can refer to them. You have seven day blueprints for smart goals, setting smart goals. You have a seven day breakdown for doing step by step planning, which you can intermingle, intermingle into your smart goals. And then you have a seven day path to engaging and creating and cultivating a support system. You're doing all of this for you. It's important to understand you're creating a path of success for you, whether it's weight loss or building a a dynasty, an industry that's that's going to be insurmountable. It doesn't matter. This is the way we're going to do it. You're going to plan it. You're going to document it. You're going to refine it. And you're going to move forward. So good fortune to everyone. Uh, Thank you guys for listening, uh, particularly first timers. Uh, Thank you guys for hanging out with us all the way to the end. 
please go back uh, and listen to some other podcasts. And don't forget to share, like, subscribe, do all that kind of good stuff. It helps us out here. And come back soon. Come back soon because we'll be back and we'll have more uh, great information for you at Rethink Podcast. Have a good one. That's all for today's episode of Rethink. We hope that you've enjoyed this exploration of new ideas and perspectives and found valuable insights and strategies that you can apply to your life. Remember, you are the source of your own success and fulfillment. And by embracing new ways of thinking, you can unlock your true potential and yes, create the life that you truly desire. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to support the podcast by sharing it with your friends, your family members, your loved ones and associates, and even your followers on social media. Also, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to check out our show notes for free downloads and empowering ebooks that can help you on your journey of personal growth and empowerment. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We look forward to exploring more ideas and insights with you in the next episode of Rethink.